Brothers and sisters, I'd like to talk today about the economy. It impinges upon all of us in every way, 24 hours a day. It's a living entity. It has a pulse. It has a metabolism. It has cycles and rhythms. Its lifeblood is the circulation of commodities. Each day an enormous tide of commodities flows through the channels of trade. And this is facilitated by special organs such as the factories where the commodities are produced from other commodities, other organs such as the banking system and the stock market and the monetary system which facilitate uh, production, growth and circulation. The whole is enlivened by the focused energy of 160 million working Americans. And it is repl replete with cycles, both short-term and of longer duration. It even has convulsions. We call them recessions or depressions. They are an essential part of the metabolism by which the economy heals itself. Recessions remove the excesses built up during the expansion and reset the table for the next leg of growth. Recessions also perform the Darwinian function of weeding out the weakest. But recessions don't win elections and <laughs> as we know another is coming up right before us in November. So, it led, instead of letting things take their um, market-driven course, there has been one stimulus package after another, postponing the inevitable. And when that comes, it will be all the worse. Five decades ago, Richard Nixon ended the link between the dollar and gold, thus enabling the Federal, the federal Reserve to print money endlessly without any restraint. Before that, the dollar had to be tied to gold in some sense. Um, there was a ratio and now all restraint has been removed. They can print as much as they want. Endless money has created an extraordinary bubble in the stock market. And through this, a very small group of people have become extraordinarily rich at the expense of those who work hard for a living. The top one-tenth of one percent own as much wealth as the bottom 90%. This extraordinary polarization is without precedent in all of American history. So what happens? At every downturn and every dip, they pump more and more money into the economy. What they are really doing is pumping inflation. J 
Just go into any natural food store today, tomorrow, or the next day, and you'll see how the prices of organic peaches and nectarines, for example, have skyrocketed. Have skyrocketed, uh, uh, and, uh, as well as the prices of most fruits and vegetables. Furthermore, the federal government has just set a record for the biggest budget deficit in any fiscal year. $1.88 trillion dollars and that's with four months left to go. The largest deficit ever. Moreover, last week the national debt soared to $26 trillion dollars. Just two months previously, it was $24 trillion. As one astute commentator has said, it took the nation 210 years to run the national debt up to $2 trillion. It took exactly two months and two days to add an extra two trillion dollars. How will it all end? Most likely in hyperinflation followed by a chain reaction of bankruptcies and an economic crash of the magnitude, some say, of 1929. What's behind it all? Let's go deeper. Although this has the period just ended of um, over 10 years of economic growth has been the longest cycle ever of sustained growth, yet the amount of growth has been exceedingly paltry. The last decade, and this is symptomatic of a deeper ill, America was at the forefront of the Industrial Revolution. It was America that showed the world how to mass produce everything from automobiles to television sets to airplanes to washing machines. But now we are witnessing something without parallel. The deindustrialization of America. Tens of thousands of factories have left the United States in the past decade alone. Millions upon millions of manufacturing jobs have been lost in the same period. Um, the United States has lost a whooping 32% of its manufacturing jobs since the year 2000. And that comes to 5.5 million manufacturing jobs goodbye. Last year, China shipped 5.63 billion goods of billion dollars worth of goods to America, but purchased only what 120 billion dollars worth of stuff from here. In other words, there was a $443 billion gap. It's ridiculous. We have shifted our manufacturing base to Asia. In, some, in short, America has gone from a manufacturing economy to one based on finance insurance and real estate. America 
has no one to thank but itself for having made itself uncompetitive. But brothers and sisters, the wheel is still in spin. We are convinced that you will come through. After all, you have taken us from sustainability to regeneration. And I am convinced that you will bring us to the new birth of freedom that Abraham Lincoln prophesied. Let's go forward, brothers and sisters. The future is abundant.